Okay, the purpose of this video is to show you how to get through lab two, um, the Visio portion. The first thing you have to do is you have to get into the course and you've got to go to modules. And then you've got to get down to uh, lab overview right here. See that? If you click on the lab overview. scroll down and you got to get this lab instructions in the lab visio starter file i've already downloaded the the, the uh, instructions and i've already downloaded the starter file on my desktop on my local machine okay now that i have that what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to uh, the citrix server if you have visio on your home machine it's better it's faster seems to work better but if you're stuck you do it this way. I'm going to do it this way for the people who are, weren't able to get it installed. And Visio. I find the best way to find your apps or to go to apps to begin with. And then use your browser's find facility. So I'm going, I'm in, right now I'm in Google Chrome. Um, click on find and type Visio 2013. And then double click on it. Open the Citrix receiver launcher. If this is your first time using Citrix, then um, and then you there's a file that you have to download, which I have told you how to do in another video. And we're going to sit here and hope that Visio starts. So we'll just be patient. Okay, Visio has opened up. Now what we do is we scroll down, and yours might be in a different position, but scroll down until you find the Crow's Foot database. Open that up. That gives you all these. Then what I need to do is you need to open up the starter file. And if you're on Citrix again, you go to Open. You go to Computer. And then up comes your navigation system. And right here, that is your account on our Citrix server, which is in a remote location. The file that you downloaded earlier will not be there. It'll be here on your local disk. So you click on that, and then you wait until all these load. I have to go to users on my machine. You might just see your desktop in here, but I have to go to the users. On one machine in Windows 8, which is the operating system I'm using, I've got an account called Bward Music. So I open that up, and there's the desktop. And when I click on the desktop, up comes all the eligible files on my desktop. And that's that little starter file. And I open it up. Okay, and now we just wait. You can see down here it's loading the Visio document where my mouse is circling at the bottom of the screen. And it will bring up two tables, a suppliers table and a products table. Now, I'd previously been working on this, so... I'm going to get rid of the work that I did previously. This is how it starts, is with these two tables, or entities as we call them, a suppliers table and a products table. We want to extend this database by allowing us to store orders and uh, know what products were on which orders. To do that, we need to create what's called a many-to-many -many relationship. And I explained the why behind a many-to-many -many relationship a little earlier on in another video, which you should find in the announcements or somewhere that I may have sent it to you via email. So I'm going to create a table called orders. And it gets a primary key, which will be called order ID. And then we want to join orders to products. And to do so, we need to create what's called a junction table or an associative entity. And convention says that you normally call it the name of the two tables that you're joining, like order products or product orders. But you can also give it something if it exists in real life, which is order line. The information that will go into this about you know the product details on a specific order will go into this table eventually. So we can call it order line. This is our junction table. It has two primary keys. One we'll say product ID 
and the other one. I'm going to grab that. The primary key attribute, drag it here, and call that order ID. Okay, this is how it works. If I have an order, like order 12 in the orders table, and a product, product 1, in the product table, each row in this table as it relates to product 1 on order 12 will be identified by the number 1 for ID, product ID and 12 for order ID for a concatenated key, it's called, of 112. Con to concatenate means to join. So the way you identify each row in this table, which has information about this product on a particular order, is through its concatenated key, which, using this example, to say product ID of 1 on order 12 would be 112, because if you put 1 and 12 together as if it were two pieces of text glued together, it would be 112. Okay. Now, what we have to do is we have to join up these tables in two one-to-many relationships. Product is one-to-many. Orders is one to many. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a relationship, set it down, and I'm going to take one end and make sure products lights up, and then I'm going to take the other end and make sure that orders line lights up. And then I'm going to get another relationship. I'm going to make one end light up order line. And I'm going to get the other end to light up orders. Okay. Now, the way this works is product relates to order line in a one-to-many relationship. And orders relates to order line in a one-to-many relationship. The way I drag this relationship here onto this table is proper. One, many. So that's done properly. You can see it actually points to order ID joining each other. This one here it's backwards. You can see the many is here and the one is there. What I need to do is I need to to alter these. So this is the end point right here. If I right click set end symbol that has to be zero or more. And this begin symbol must be one and only one. Okay, you see that? And you can fatten up these lines. I'm not going to do it now, but right click, go to format shape, and then change the width of each line so it's easy to see. Okay, now that we've got this together like that, and it, it makes more sense if you look at it like this, you can see that each product is associated with many order lines, and each order is associated with many order lines. Um, but each order line has a unique primary key composed of the product number on that order and the order ID. So if I have two products on this order, I might have product four on this order as well. The row that identifies product four on order 12 would have a value of 412 because of this concatenated key, 412. Now the only thing, the other thing we have to change to make this relationship work is we've got to right click, sorry, we've got to right click on this and we have to set this as a foreign key and for some reason it's not letting me. Why not? Right click. Set foreign key. There we go. Because not only are these two together a concatenated primary key, they also point to specific rows in other tables. So this order ID actually points to an order ID in here, so it's a foreign key. And then this, I right click and I have to go to set as a foreign key as well. So junction tables always have this structure. The many's are right here attached to the side. The two product, the two um, pri primary keys act jointly as a primary key, but individually as foreign keys. And then what you have to do is you have to add all of the other non-key attributes to um, a non-key meaning not up here, right? All these are non-key attributes. We have to add the non-key attributes to each of these tables. And for that, you need to go to the instructions and see if I can bring up the instructions. They have a whole bunch of them, and I'm not going to do them all. But you can see they want you to add like order line unit price, order line quantity, order line discount. And they've indicated that some of these are required and some of these are not required. To make them required means that when you 
ultimately implement the database, the user can't move off the row unless they supply all of the values for the required columns. So they wouldn't be able to move off it, the orders table unless there was a an order date in it. But if there was an order ship date not in it, if it was missing an order ship date, they could move off the row and save it to the database because it's not required to have one to save. That's what that means. And again, I'm not going to go into all of these. I'm going to show you, though, how to add one. I think we had order line unit price or something like that. Okay, we need to add all those in. There was one here, you know, order date, and that was required. There was another one, a ship date, and that was not required. Okay, so now what you have to do is you have to go for this one, order date. You have to right click and go get it selected. Come on, there we go. Set required. It makes it kind of bold, but that means that you've got to have one of those or else um, you, you know, you're not going to be able to save the order. You can see these other ones have already been done. You see how some of these are bold? And if we go back in the instructions, they probably told you others had to be. I don't know if there's others in there. Look for them, what it says in here. Some of them have to be required. Order line unit price and order line quantity. OK, so I'm going to put order line quantity. Both of these are required. So I click on that, go set required. Click on that, go set required. See that? And that shows you how to do a many-to-many -many relationship in Visio.